Unit Number Twelve, Chapter One, Combustion. Now, in this unit, uh, we talk, we'll talk about the combustion theory and types of fuels and the relationship between the refractory and uh, the fuel used. Okay. Now, the combustion requires uh, the minimum three thing you know, is the requirement. Uh, uh, you we need the heat, just like the temperature, to maintain the the temperature of the fuel. No, and then the fuel itself, right, and the oxygen. Now during the combustion process, uh, uh, the oxygen we use uh, is from the ambient air. So as you know, uh, in in the air, there's lots of nitrogen in there. So those nitrogen, uh, it's not reacting with anything if uh, the temperature is low enough. Uh, and they just being heated. Uh, and carry out all the energy uh, up to the stack, uh, so that's not really good for the combustion process. Uh. Now the common fuel component, uh, uh, it's just, uh, you can remember it's a uh, no cares, uh, nitrogen, oxygen, carbon, acid, all, the, all, the, all those. Uh. Now, most of you, they have the uh, content of moisture. Uh. So moisture H is hydrogen uh, and oxygen, right? It's including there already. Uh. But uh, not every, Single one on the list there can be can be burned, huh? so they just happen exit in the different types of fuel. Okay. Now one of the big topics nowadays uh, is uh, exit rain, uh, the environment. Uh. So the NOx production uh, is one of the important aspect of the the, the burning process, uh, the combustion. So the NOx we refer to uh, is a uh, as a compound which combine of oxide uh, of nitrogen, it could be NO, eh, NO2, eh, or different types of combination. So they are produced uh, when the furnace temperature is really, really high, so around 1500 degrees C. Eh. Now, you, as you know, there is nitrogen uh, uh, in the air. The, there's another type of nitrogen, uh, it's embedded in the, the, the fuel. So those nitrogen embedded in the fuel uh, is quite quite easier to react with the oxygen uh, to to form the NOx. Uh, um, it's a whole lot serious, more serious uh, than the nitrogen in the air. Now, so you, if you want to avoid the uh, the formation of NOx, uh, so that means that you have to lower the temperature uh, of uh, lower than fifteen hundred degrees C. Uh, now, there are lots of different ways to do it. Huh? Now, actually, the second one, huh, burning fuel stages, huh, that this one huh, is actually you know, one of the methods to lower the temperature uh, of the furnace. Huh? Or uh, lots of the plants, huh, they use a, what they call the tail gas cleanup process. Huh? Just like before the, the fuel, huh, just like the... Uh, the NO or the NOx uh, go to the chimney, uh, they put in a device in there. It calls tail gas clean up uh, so, and use chemical uh, to to take out the NOx before it go to the chimney. That is another one too. Uh. Now for combustion to complete, uh, there's a three T's, time, temperature and turbulence. Uh. So time is just say uh, you need to keep the time uh, for the chemical reaction uh, to to complete. So the temperature is, um, you need to raise the temperature of the fuel uh, because, before it can uh, completely burn. Uh. Now turbulence uh, uh, is very really important too uh, because you know, if you have lots of, let's say uh, carbon, uh, you have lots of carbon in, in one side, uh, you have the lots of oxygen on the other side, uh, if they don't mix it up, uh, so only a portion uh, of the the carbon and nitrogen uh, touch each other, uh, so the reaction is really small, uh, so it will end up in uh, incomplete uh, combustion. Uh. So turbulence uh, is just uh, the mix up with the fuel uh, and the oxygen. Now, uh, you also need uh, enough air uh, for 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 it to to. To complete the reaction. Now, later on, we are talking about the excess air, something like that. Huh? Okay. Now, this is just a really basic uh, 
basic uh, 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 chemical equation uh, of the the carbon, uh, uh, hydrogen, and then the sulfur when they burn. Uh, okay. Now, so CO itself, uh, it is a fuel. It can be burned. Uh, it can produce energy, uh, but it's also poisonous. Uh, so if you you have enough. Uh, uh, if you, have, you don't have enough oxygen uh, for the burning process, uh, the result uh, is the carbon monoxide. Uh, okay? Now, so for carbon monoxide, you can further burn it uh, to become CO2. Uh, now, so CO itself uh, is uh, combustible. Uh, but the problem is uh, CO is uh, poisonous. Uh, so that means that uh, you have to have a really good design in your furnace. Uh, so that it will not come out. Uh, otherwise, uh, if the, the CO come out of the furnace, uh, it probably kill everybody in the powerhouse. Uh. Now, so the design, uh, you can use a uh, airtight furnace uh, so that uh, the CO cannot escape out. Uh. Another way to do it uh, is use a vacuum, uh, vacuum in the furnace. So you create a vacuum all the time uh, in the furnace. Uh, so if there's a leak, uh, the air going in instead of the CO coming out. Uh, okay. Now uh, the composition of air. So by volume, it's only one, twenty-one and seventy-eight and one percent. All the other, other uh, different uh, gases in there. But usually we just combine into say it was twenty-one percent oxygen, uh, seventy-nine percent volume. By, just like by volume of the air composition. Uh. Now, but when you do the calculation, we use mass uh, to do the calculation. So, uh, this is more we are more interested in uh, is 23% uh, oxygen and 77% nitrogen by mass. Okay, so that is the important one we want to notice. Uh. Now, so the next topic is a uh, free article air and excess air. Now, one of the, the three T uh, is turbulence. Uh. So, if you have really good turbulence, uh, you, you need a lower percentage of excess air. Uh. Now, but, but the problem is, uh, uh, the turbulence all mixed up. Uh, you cannot get the, the carbon and oxygen next to each other, 100% like that. Uh. So, that means uh, we have to put more air into the the furnace uh, in order to complete the combustion process. Uh. Now, so the free article air uh, is the bare minimum, uh, the exact amount of air, go by the equa chemical equation, uh, how much for, the, for, for it to, to complete the combustion. Uh. But the excess air uh, is the amount of air in excess of the free article air uh, you need. Uh, because the turbulence uh, uh, or the mixture is not 100% perfect. Uh. Okay, now let's take a look. The, the fuel gas uh, is referred to uh, whatever come out of the, the chimney, uh, the stair. So some of them uh, is a process of uh, combustion. Uh. Now CO2, HO2, SO2, uh, uh, NOC, uh, uh, they are they are the the product of the combustion eh? now and then eh, uh, the O2 and N2 are original in the air eh? and some of the moisture eh, which is CO2 is all already in in the in the in the in the air eh? okay so that means uh, uh, all these one uh, whatever come out of the chimney we said that is uh, your fuel gas eh? now. So now the typical air and excess air uh, um, require now the solid fuel they always use more excess air and the fuel gas is a little bit less uh, and the gas uh, gas rust of food that's just natural gas uh, LPG uh, they are uh, really really low uh. now when you burn in coal uh, if you use a stroker it's a conveyor belt, you put the coal or solid fuel in that burn. Huh? So those ones require lots and lots of excess air, 25 to 35%. Huh? 
and the per perforalizer core is you ground the coal into powder and bowl it into the furnace. Uh, so those require 15 to 20 percent. Uh. Now, um, on in the powerhouse there, lots of time you know, we on the control there we said you know oxygen trim. Uh, we trim the oxygen to a certain amount. Uh, so this is referred to the uh, amount of oxygen. Uh, uh, except oxygen we require. Now for 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 ga gas, uh, natural gas, uh, uh, you only need one to two percent. Uh. So on the big boiler, uh, the really really uh, big boiler, they burn lots and lots of natural gas, uh, a few million dollar a year, of course. Uh. So the ten percent reduction, uh, that's about two hundred thousand dollar fuel uh, reduction. So they trim the oxygen, uh, the excess oxygen, uh, really really low. Uh. I, some of them, uh, they even trim it, the oxygen uh, to even lower than 1%, 0.6%, something like that. Uh, okay. now, now, because, you know, if you have the excess, if you don't have enough oxygen, uh, you have incomplete combustion. Uh, but if you, you have too much oxygen go in, uh, you just heat it up and let it absorb the heat. Uh, and go to the chimney, yeah? so that is lots of ways of uh, money. Yeah? Now, so uh, all, some of the, the code book in here, yeah? um, so C, uh, the CSA, uh, all C 149, uh, 139, and B51, huh? they all uh, ha have something about the combustion air uh, requirement. Huh? Okay. Now objective two, we just took a look uh, of different types of a uh, fuel. Uh, okay. Now the the solar fuel, um, the majority uh, the solar fuel, but the most important one is uh, the coal. Uh, it be uh, according to statistic, uh, we still have one thousand year of supply of coal in the ground. Uh, but right now, uh, nobody want to buy a uh, burner because uh, it produces a uh, CO two. Uh, it's just a greenhouse gas. Uh, okay. Now the other one uh, is uh, the wood, the uh, wood chip uh, on the on 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 the forest powder uh, and the bio biomass uh, and the municipal uh, municipal solid waste. Uh, uh, they do have. They can burn burn this. Uh. Now so the calorie uh, and the composition value uh, are really really different. Uh. So even you say coal, uh, even one type of coal. They depend the concentration of a certain thing. Uh, the, the the heat value uh, is a whole lot different. Uh, okay. Now, so in order to, to get the composition, uh, to do this, uh, you have two different types of analysis uh, to get the value of coal. Uh, now, so one of them are uh, approximate analysis. So this one, uh, it measure the 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 content of moisture. Uh, the fixed carbon which we can burn uh, and then the volatile combustible material uh, so those one uh, uh, is easily burn uh, uh, volatile material uh, and ash and those ways uh, cannot be burned uh, so the, uh, you just uh, do analysis or each one uh, and de develop uh, the value uh, the heating value now the the ultimate uh, analysis uh, it just say uh, you break down everything uh, into the element level uh, and and see um, each uh, composition uh, by, by by the mass uh, so and then you calculate uh, the heating value uh, so carbon hydrogen oxygen nitrogen and sulfur and ash each one have that uh. now but the problem is you using these uh, is if you have the moisture content uh, is a lot, uh, so that means you have H2O in there. So that means uh, the H in here, some of the H in here may not be compatible uh, because it already exists in the H2O. Uh, it cannot be burned. Uh, so that's one drawback of these two. Uh. Now, the, so for the, the solid fuel, uh, uh, the most common one uh, uh, is coal. And unfortunately, uh, coal is the one that produces lots of CO2. Uh. In Ontario, uh, we closed uh, the, coal, the coal generating station many, many years ago. Uh. I believe you know, the, the one in Lambton, uh, Lambton Shore, uh, 
is one of the last to to shut down. Uh. So Pam, you know, is uh, McGinty, uh, the premier, also the one who shut it down. Uh. So that's quite some some years ago, uh, at least 15 years, something like that. Uh. Now inside coal, uh, there is sulfur. Sulfur can be burned, produce energy, uh, but the problem is sulfur uh, burn become SO2 and SO3, uh, and it is uh, exit rain. Uh, so that is the the main drawback of the coal uh, because of sulfur content. Uh. Now there are other different types of um, solid fuel, uh, you know, the, the wood chip, all those ones. Uh, and um, you probably have to know what the hawk, hawk fuel is. Uh. Hawk fuel uh, is the waste wood uh, from the forest industry. Uh, they chop into a small or size. Uh, so that is called the hawk fuel. Uh. So the, the liquid, liquid fuel, um, the, 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 they are, I'll just say, you know, they are from a distillation uh, of the, in the oil industry. Uh, so they will produce, well, after the refinery, uh, they produce a lot of jack fuel, uh, furnace oil, diesel, uh, and then, you know, and bunker C, uh, all different types. Uh, so they can be uh, classified uh, by the very little density uh, or the viscosity uh, or the fast point. Okay. Now, so relative density is the ratio of mass uh, to to the volume, uh, and then you compare compare to water. Take water as one. Uh, so if you have the uh, relative density less than one, that means you're lighter than water, heavier than wa one, heavier than water. Something like that. Now the viscosity uh, is a measure of the internal resistance for the oil to flow. Uh. Now one of the, the the, the uh, method used in uh, North America, it it measures 60 c just a gram a certain amount of oil. Eh? Let it flow through a filter. Now and they count the time. Eh? So you have a certain amount of uh, liquid oil. Let it go through a filter, and then eh, you count the second it takes to for every drop to go through. Huh? So this one is the SSU, huh? it's a cyber uh, universal unit or something like that. Huh? So that means you know, the thinner oil will go through the filter in no time. Huh? The heavy oil, heavier oil, huh? uh, higher viscosity, huh? it takes longer to flow. Huh? So if you see the viscosity, uh, SSU unit, huh? if lower, that means it's lighter, huh? yeah, not that thick. Huh? And the first point is the lowest temperature and which the fuel oil can keep up with some fusion vapor to ignite. Yeah? So that's a good thing. Um, now in this um, the table, uh, the characteristic of fuel oil, uh, I, I don't think anybody will, will ask you to memorize anything. Uh, but one thing you need to know uh, is now grade number one, two, as the grade goes up, uh, the relative density goes up. Okay, the viscosity there uh, also uh, goes up. Now the heating value is uh, really debatable. Uh. It it depends how much uh, ash content is uh, in the oil too. Uh. So this one is um, a pretty bit debatable. Uh. Now the fast uh, the fast point. Uh, the lighter the oil, the lower the the fast point. Uh, okay. Now the application uh, for the number one and number. Uh, number one, uh, furnace oil, uh, domestic use, uh, and then uh, the grade number two, uh, the diesel, uh, it could be industrial uh, or the domestic use. Uh, and so when you go to four, five, six, uh, this is uh, just because you need too many different types of equipment to burn. Uh, so uh, at home, uh, you probably don't need to uh, invest so much of equipment to burn the oil. So nobody use uh, the uh, five and six. Uh, heavy oil. Huh? Now, so grade one and grade two, huh, a furnace oil, huh, really low viscosity. Huh? Uh, so they do not need preheating huh, uh, before burning in the furnace. You just pump it in huh, and spray it and and then it will burn. Huh? But the bunker C, huh, 
bunker C you refer to the grain number five and six uh, those are the heavier oil uh, so for, in order to burn these uh, you need to be heat this to uh, a little bit over 95 degrees C uh, before you can burn it we, you hit the uh, heat it up uh, to 195 before you can what we call atomize uh, break it up the really small small chocolate uh, so that it can be burned uh, so uh, number five and C, uh, six bunker C you need to heat it up uh, heat up to 90 at least 95 degrees C uh. now to arrange it compared to solar fuel uh, of course yeah uh, uh, less storage uh, and less equipment uh, and cleaner combustion the, the solar fuel uh. now so, so the environmental safety measure also now if you have a oil storage tank uh, so when you burn oil you in a powerhouse you probably have a big oil storage tank uh, uh, so that can supply you for for at least you know four or five hours or something like that uh. now in case that leak uh, uh, you need to have a containment uh, containment that means so in, uh, in the oil tank outdoor uh, you build use concrete uh, just build around it uh, around the oil tank so and the volume on on the, that area had to be uh, 110 percent of the whatever volume in the storage tank uh, in case there's a leak uh, and the containment can uh, contain all the oil leak uh, okay now uh, so when you're burning oil there's other safety uh, device too uh. one of them really common one uh, uh, in the modern oil burning um, equipment uh, it, what they call the oil safety valve uh. now in the steam safety valve it is if you have steam too much uh, and the safety valve bow uh, but in the oil safety valve works uh, exactly opposite uh. so the oil safety valve is the one one piece of equipment uh, have a diaphragm in there you know, if there's a leak in the piping uh, so you cannot be uh, create a vacuum uh, and then the the safety well will stop uh, and prevent the oil from pumping out and leaking everywhere so that is the oil safety valve uh, okay now so for the natural gas fuel uh, so natural gas uh, 90 percent uh, is a methane okay or uh, some of them is uh, liquid liquefied petroleum, petroleum gas uh, the LPG and now the LPG is li uh, liquefied petroleum gas uh, now so the propane uh, and butane uh, so this one is the uh, C3 and C4 uh, so those one uh, uh, they are they are already liquid uh, in a, a certain pressure uh, so that you can burn it like that too uh. and the the biogas uh, uh, is uh, if you have a garbage dump uh, you cover the whole thing uh, whatever it produces uh, lots of uh, CH4 produce and uh, you can tap into their uses of fuel uh. now advantage of the gas fuel uh, the thing is you don't have too too many ass produce uh, and you don't need too many equipment to handle this uh, and um, I highlight this uh, uh, because you know th this one uh, is one of the main advantage uh, they burn really clean and you don't need to atomize uh, before you burn uh. atomizing because is you break up the fuel uh, into small droplets uh, and then it burn but the gas natural gas uh, you don't need to do that uh, so, okay. now the last uh, thing we want to take a look at is the refractory uh. now the refractory uh, is uh, really really high insulation value uh, insulation material okay we use a lot of them right in the in the furnace uh, so it could be uh, the form of brick uh, a board or brand or just say like the the gunnable uh, that means you, know, you have a, a just like grease gun uh, you you can squeeze it into the crack or something like that uh. a cast uh, castable uh, it's just a uh, just like concrete uh, you you cast it or, or put the layer on top or something like that uh, and it could be malleable too uh. now different types of gas uh, uh, fuel uh, uh, 
the requirement of the factory is uh, different. Huh? So natural gas, because the uh, the the natural gas at uh, the the temperature and nobody high, huh? so the requirement of the refactory is nobody high. Oil uh, require a little bit more refactory, yeah. Huh? Now and the oil by powder, uh, lots of that uh, SO2 uh, and NOx, uh, those things uh, will eat into your refactory, yeah. Huh? And the refractory because the well, temperature is higher, huh? and then you have the oil by powder, huh? you you will see you know the more crack. Uh, in the refractory uh, than natural gas. Okay. Now the solid fuel. Uh, um, so on there's lots of sulfur in the the solid fuel or coal, uh, and um, they, they they will corrode your refractory. Uh, and then you probably uh, sometimes uh, you you have the the byproduct uh, the burning coal. Uh, those one is just a uh, really sticky stuff. Uh, just like Sticking ash, right? The one is stick to together, uh, is we call the 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 the, the clean cars. Uh, just a really big piece of uh, uh, ash, really sticky, uh, and stick on the refractory, uh, and then uh, that you the solid fuel the uh, temperature is higher too, uh, so we need a little bit more uh, the the refractory. Uh. Okay, so that concludes our chapter. Uh.